Good afternoon or good morning everybody. Welcome to today's uh, webinar with our very special guest Felix who we shall uh, get to in a second. Uh, so today we're going to talk about lighting and a bit of editing in Capture One and making all that stuff work together super nicely. Um, now today we're going out to three different locations. So we've got people in the webinar room. Hello. Uh, so thanks for joining us there and signing up. And we're also going out onto our YouTube group uh, and also, also our Facebook page, or our YouTube page, I should say, and also our Facebook page. So thanks for joining there as well, and feel free on YouTube and Facebook to ask questions too, and, uh, and uh, we will do our best to try and answer as much as possible. Now, for those of you in the webinar room, and actually for everyone, today we've got uh, a maximum of 60 minutes that we're gonna run through. Um, we say that, sometimes we overrun, but that's, uh, that's the plan. If you are in the webinar room and you want to ask a question, I'm also being uh, assisted by my colleague, Yulia. Uh, so if you do wanna ask a question, make sure you pop that into the Q&A tab because it just keeps that separate uh, from the main chat window, which does get rather busy as well. So if you see uh, Yulia pop in and answer a question, don't be surprised. Uh, she's also working with us at Capture One. And of course, if you wanna chat, you are more than welcome as well. Uh, we are recording this too. Uh, it's going straight to YouTube, so as soon as, as, as it finished, it'll be available uh, to watch again. Now, if you wanna hide the chat in the webinar room, you can just hit that button in the top right-hand corner and then that will hide it. Equally on YouTube, if the live chat bothers you, you can uh, hide that and see full screen glory as well. So let us begin. So let's go and find uh, Felix, who was just eating his lunch. Hey, Felix. <laughs> How's <laughs> hey, it going? Hey, David. How's it going? Very well, Hi, thanks. everyone watching at home. Good, good. Uh, so uh, today, we're gonna to talk about lighting, of course, as that's your mm -hmm. specialty, uh, and also how that ties in with your lighting process to then get uh, the best result uh, into Capture One as well. Um, now, we're gonna talk about your Facebook group and other things a little bit later on as well, but maybe for the people who are less familiar uh, with what you do, maybe give us the, the 30 second bio. Oh God. Well, I'm a portrait <laughs> photographer. I have this weird accent because I grew up, I was born in Berlin. I grew up in England. Mm -hmm. Now I live in New York and I spend like a few months a year in South Africa. So it's, it's, you know, people always like, where are you from? And I mean, that's not an easy question to answer. It's a mishmash um, of everything. Exactly. Yeah. And I've been focusing on um, portrait photography and I'm also known for my uh, online lighting classes, which we've got like 14,000 students now. Okay. Um, or the lighting series and the location lighting series, which have kind of revolutionized lighting in a non-jargony way. So, Good. You know, when I was starting out, yeah. When I was starting out, we would get, I would get told that I had to be a wizard to just learn any lighting at all. And I wanted to change that because I didn't find that to be the case. Right. You know, the more you know, the better, but you don't need to know the intricate physics of photons just to understand how to make a nice portrait <laughs> no exactly and that's you know that's a good ethos to live by i think because you can get bogged down with the technicalities and everything but uh you also have to make a nice picture yeah i mean at the end of the day what the client doesn't care how many lights you use they care about if they look good yeah exactly exactly and that's true for portrait clients and commercial advertising clients yeah, for everyone all over. Right. Um, yeah. As I said, we've got uh, tons of people watching today. So again, thanks for joining That's us good. on all the various different platforms. And questions are, of course, encouraged. If we don't get to all of the questions, please don't be offended. There is rather a lot of you, uh, but we shall do our best to answer uh, as many as possible. So uh, what should we start with, Felix? So... I guess I wanted to kind of show a couple of images. So I don't know who tuned in on the um, broadcast that I did in my Facebook group. David, would you just mind pulling up? Or I'll just pull it up here. I think I have the, for those of you who are not aware, mm -hmm. you can get into my Facebook group. This is a Facebook lighting Facebook group. And I did a live broadcast there. And if you join the group, us, it's still available for rebroadcast. So if you want to see how we did this shoot, um, I shot my friend Brandy Nicole, who is in my 
quarantine bubble. <laughs> quarantine um, buddies. So we yep. had a whole, yeah, she is my neighbor. And uh, at the beginning of quarantine, we made a little bubble. Um, and um, I photographed her on Monday and I, was, I promised everyone I was going to retouch these images and capture one. Um, do you want to show, I guess we should kind of show how I lit this as a little one minute video. Yeah, um, yeah, I'll, I'll roll that. That I cut from that live. Yeah. yeah, let's roll that. Yeah, I'll well, roll that. Okay, it's coming up now. Backlight setup. Can you see the light peeking above the thing? Perfect. So I'm going to have it just peeking above, about halfway above. And I'm going to angle it all a bit. Angle it a little bit towards the V-flat. Bring it up a little bit more. I'm going to just do a little check to make sure none of the light is coming over the top of the backdrop because that's going to give me a lot of trouble. I'm going to turn my light up about two stops. So I've just gone from 3.0 to 5.0. So those donate um, stops. And then I'm going to bring my V-flat and this angle that we've got that Emily's filming is actually perfect for this. I'm going to bring my V-flat. So what is happening now is, if you imagine, I'm going to set it up um, to have the light come over the top of the backdrop, bounce into the V-flat, and back onto our subject. I show this in the backlight setup in the lighting series. There we go. It was an abrupt finish, but that was the end of the shot. <laughs> well, yeah, it's cut directly out of the live, so I had to, you know, I... I uh... Watch the whole thing if you want. Um, it's in that Facebook group. Uh, and, it's, and it's still there to watch as well, isn't it? Yeah, I had yeah. it. I had it on uh, rebroadcast, um, and then I actually cut because we had some technical difficulties in the video, and I cut all of that out for everyone, so you don't have to <laughs> don't watch have to me sit through that while I'm doing yeah. it live. Yeah, I'd say with brilliant. with so, your uh, technical difficulties and the day I've spent having technical difficulties, hopefully our double jinx will uh, cancel us out as well, and this is going to be trouble free. Well, it's 2020, right? It's, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So that's actually kind of the images I think we shot at that, with that setup. So you have, um, I don't know how much, I guess people want to know about Capture One, but we could, I want to just kind of talk through the lighting yeah, a little to, bit. Yeah, no, no, talk, so, talk through the lighting for sure. You can see the image up here on the screen, right? Yep, we can, yep. Okay, so on, her, on the top left of Brandy here, so Brandy is Brandy Nicole Photo on Instagram, just anyone wants to follow her. She's also active in the Ellen Chrome community, uh, the Capture One um, community in general. Yep, and so, um, so I have a, um, I have an Ellen Chrome 100 centimeter deep dish Rotolux, which is lighting just above the background and it's giving us that light directly. And then it's bouncing off like you saw in the video of a V flat on Brandy's right. And that's what's lighting up the face and giving really soft, natural light. This is the uh, backlight setup from my class, the lighting series, um, which I'll talk about a bit later, I guess, as well. Mm -hmm. But it's one of my favorite setups. If I could shoot everything like this, I really would. And then the um, this kind of hazy effect was actually created by um, some tool fabric that we had. Okay. Um, that we were kind of swishing around in front of the camera. So it's a really simple one light setup that looks absolutely beautiful. And I'll show you, let me just show you, I was trying out like a little crystal in front of the lens here, but you can see, and the reason I really thought we could use these images for the Capture One demo is the background has this kind of teal feeling actually. Right. You don't quite see it in the, um, because the, of the way the, the camera captured the white balance but it's probably closer to this kind of tone in real life. And right. the camera just read it a little bit cooler. Um, so when we were styling this, I thought, right, Randy, I want to go with um, the similar style to some uh, live I did with Brandy here in, in April. Let me show you here. So this is a shoot I did before mm -hmm. and was also with the backlight setup also in my group. And I said, let's try to make this, which was like a very monochrome theme a little more colorful. And so I had to use what I have at the studio. So we ended up with this teal backdrop, this blue wig, and we used a similar styling on her body, but I wanted something that really sticks out. So between the blue and the teal, the blue wig and the blue, uh, teal backdrop, I think these two colors don't really work together, but All I right. knew that I can make changes on those in Capture One really easily. So 
<laughs> Let me see. So you only need these. one background color, right? Well, <laughs> <laughs> well, it's actually a really good point because when you use gray backdrops, yep. there's no color to shift. No, true. So using a colored backdrop, like I can make this, let me just use this one, I suppose. Let's see how it does. Hmm. I'm going to go to the color editor over here on the left. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to pick out, I'm just going to use the dropper tool. I'm going to pick out the camera, uh, the, the color of the backdrop. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to go to my little options, which is in the new version. You select the color range here. There we go. Yep. And you can see that it's picking up a little. So this is just showing what the color range that I've selected. So I'm going to see if I can get a better selection. Mm -hmm. I can't because I don't want the wig to shift, right? So I no. can play around. You see, if anything that's got saturation in this is the selected color range. I clicked here on view selected color range, and that just helps you kind of every time you pick one, by the way, it'll make a new little uh, selection here. So I can see if I maybe take it more towards the green and just restrict on this side if we get less in the wig. But either way, I don't think it's a dominant color in the wig. No, you've, you've isolated um, most of it pretty much. We've pretty much yeah. isolated the background. But for my point, because in the final select, it's not going to be much of an issue. I could also mask this out in the layer. But I use the advanced color tab. Uh, the basic color tab gives you like your basic blues, greens, uh, you know, all the different, uh, like you can select a, a shade. And then the advanced one you allows you to pick one. So anyway, I've got this tab and I could then change the hue of the background. I'm going to show you how it looks without having selected the selected color range. And you can see how it just shifts and the, the wig actually stays pretty much the same. Mm -hmm. So we've already with like those high fidelity tools that we have in Capture One, just kind of really isolated actually looks really nice. So I could bring it, I could bring it to this place, or I could bring it to that place. And that might change again, as I go and edit um, different parts of this image. And I just wanted to say as an aside, one of the things I do with color is Adobe has apps that let you upload an image. So let's say I uploaded this image, and I can uh, plot these on a color wheel and see if I can get a complementary color right. scheme. Sometimes yeah, I, it doesn't feel I, I've seen people use that and that looks really, it's not something I've investigated myself, but it looks like a super interesting way of, of color grading for sure. So there's a, I worked with Kate Woodman for yep. years as a color class with ProEDU. Um, and she taught me how to use color wheels, uh, the color wheel and like you can get complementary color um, mm -hmm. scheme things. And what it does is it just helps you find like, where does this color in her wig here balance with the background, right? Um, I'm not going to do it for this because you'll see my final selects don't have that much of the background in it. But it's one of the ways I kind of use um, Capture One to kind of create that balance. And I think here in this instance, we could play around with the saturation. You see, that gets a little bit crazy because you, <laughs> you do yep. color in the wig. I mean, generally, any the saturation slider should be used with uh, caution. And I think the easiest way to do this is just to bring the lightness down and we've brought the hue closer to where the hair is. But I can do that with each of the elements of the image. Um, just be careful if I was to do it with like something like this over here, the the flare. It mm. has a it's too close to skin tones. Yep. So be careful when you when you change color tones on anything that's in the yellow, red um, kind of range. So um, and I also can use skin tones. Sometimes I actually use it to find like really specific colors. It just narrows it down even more. So let me just reset this image, go back to the raw. Um, I pressed, I'm going to press Command R, R for radio. <laughs> not, I'm not speaking pirate language. Um, if I select, let's see, sometimes I use the skin tone dropper just to see if that isolates it a little bit more. And it, I think it's pretty similar on this in this case because we yeah. have these two tones pretty uh, close together. So I'll just use, I'll just do that quickly again because it's super easy. There we go. We brought it closer to where we're at. So that was one of the things I wanted to do with the color work. And that, I think it's, um, if you have an Adobe subscription, it's one of the tools is, I think it's just called Adobe color, but there's definitely tools for like checking, uploading an image and mm -hmm. Adobe will pick out which colors, dominant colors you have. And you can kind of start to see how you could make them fit into a color scheme. Um, right. So I wanted to see if we can isolate the wig also, because we've got the one selection here. 
Mm -hmm. That's for the background, so I can always go back and edit this again. And if I use the picker again, let me go in an area that I know doesn't have too much of the same color. I think I was here. I don't want to have it select too much of the background. Yeah, okay, so that's a bit narrow. Yeah, it's not picking up much of the wig, you see. And I want to avoid it picking up too much of the backdrop as well. Mm -hmm. I could play around with these three and kind of change the hue of specific areas of the wig. But what's probably going to work easiest for this image, if I go to the basic color editor, I'm just going to pick the color that's closest. And again, you can do view selected color range. So I've selected the, this is the cyan, I guess. Yep. I'm going to just play around which one is going to have, oh yeah, okay. Which one's going to be affecting the wig the most? And I think the cyan's is probably the one. And obviously that's going to shift also as you change your white balance, right? Yeah, absolutely. So it's just going to apply based on what your white balance is. So if I shifted this all the way over here, I'd probably have to go, yeah, you see it's not showing any of that in the same range. Mm -hmm. Go back on my white balance. So these tools work, you know, in combination. So it's actually a little trick you could use, but you just have to be aware as you change the white balance, it will change what you've done on your color um, selection. Anyway, so I could shift the hue a little, a little bit here, and it's just kind of, you see what the, with the basic color editor, you're gonna get a lot of a broader color kind of uh, space for. Yeah. And it's the full saturation range as well, so you don't have any control yeah. over that. So if you're not fussy about that, it's fine. But if you know you want to just have the most saturated or the least saturated, that's where the you run out of options in the basic editor. Exactly. So, yeah. but it just allows you to shift. I mean, this is actually quite nice to get it to be a little bit more um, neon blue, I guess. And I'm not going to work too much in the saturation, but this will come back in handy when we select the other images. Mm -hmm. So, um, I've got all these. You know, this is I shot what 169 images during the shoot. And you can see here, like this is my first lighting setup. If you watch the live broadcast again, you'll see uh, how we kind of built it live. I'm very much about showing the raw process. Mm -hmm. And then we went to the backlight setup, which I really like. And I think I made some selects. So I just, I go up here in this little magnifying glass and I've already made my one star selects. Now Brandy showed me something really cool that I wanted to show you. So can you see that? Uh, on the screen or is it cropping off the side there should be two no, no, columns we can yeah. see it yep we can see two columns yep they're, they're small but we can see them. <laughs> well but that's fine i've brought yeah. them up so brandy actually showed me this the other day and I was, i'm in love with it if i i can um select four images or i guess six images um that is five images because i've unselected one there we go and if i hit option and i um hit the left or right button while holding down the option key, that's on the Mac, I don't know what it is on the PC, I can actually uh, scroll through six images at a time, mm -hmm. which is really great. And I'm gonna use that forever because it makes an editing a shoot so much faster. And um, yeah, we've only got 41 selects from this shoot. So I, that's my one star select and I make two star selects. Here we go. And from these, let's pick right now, which are gonna be my three stars. I think it's gonna be this top left one I really like the feeling. Um, the top right is nice, but I think she looks like she's asleep. <laughs> this bottom... Poor Brandy. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Brandy. <laughs> this bottom left one. So if I like both of the bottom images, but the bottom left one probably speaks more closely with how I like to perceive my subject as being strong, mm -hmm. resilient, and like with fortitude, this, this one would be probably a little bit too soft for me. Uh, I'm going to option tab over again. This uh, lovely, this one is very nice, has a good feel, but her eyes are not quite there. I like the top right one, absolutely. And what we've done is put, simply just put some tool in front of the image. I like this bottom right one, but I think the hair flying off to the side gives it a little bit of too much of like a, it puts too much attention on the wig itself. Mm -hmm. It feels like a wig. Uh, maybe I, Mary Brandy doesn't want me to reveal her secret that that's not her actual hair. <laughs> <laughs> Spoiler alert. Yeah. <laughs> Spoiler alert, exactly. And then this series is very similar. And I think, so what I had done is I'd ripped a little hole in the tool. Okay. And then I put it over the camera so that you just had like a, a, a ring of uh, tool fabric yep. and like a little gap where, that I could use to kind of get the saturated part of her 
a face. Nice. And that's the bottom right image. I think that's the one I'm going to use. And then we just have these two. And from these, I think that's fine. So I think I have, I've made three or four selects. Four. Okay. So let's start with this one. And what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to try, well, no, let's just start from scratch. So here you see, we don't have that much of that problem because we've gotten rid of the saturation with the tool on the background. Mm -hmm. And that's just as we worked into the shoot. But right now I'm going to look at this image and kind of define the things that I want to change. So if we look at her eye color compared to her hair color, I'm going to ignore this color because it doesn't, I think it's going to be just fine. It doesn't really feel any distracting here on the background, but I want to work with the color of the, of the eucalyptus here. Um, which is her headband, her hair, hair piece, and um, the things she's holding here. I'm not going to worry too much about the skin tones, but I want to make sure they don't shift too much. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to um, about the hair color as well. So from the previous image, I get the feeling that um, the camera was reading the white balance a little cooler than it actually was. So I could warm it up a little bit. Although I like the cool because it gives it, it really works with the um, the blue wig. And because I had intended to have a very saturated colorful color blocking image I'm also going to keep that in mind so i like to look at an image and then just kind of define the qualities of what i want it to end up looking like so i don't go astray too much <laughs> sometimes it's just fun to mess around but in this one i know what i was going for now the first place i start is my base characteristics now sometimes i i, I often most of the time bring it into film extra shadow and anyone that shoots on a dslr knows why this kind of feels a little closer to what you're getting on the back of the camera mm -hmm. most of the time. If you're shooting in neutral preview mode on your camera, you're going to get an image that looks kind of much more desaturated, mm -hmm. less, less contrasty than when you import the raw. That's just because the back of the camera is doing a very quick calculation to make you kind of see the image at a better, um, what's the word? range so yeah. you have Un more. unprocessed state i guess and like um yeah like but... like any raw converter you know the we put some kind of contrast curve on it and then the the yeah. default the film standard is is going to be a, probably a little bit stronger than preview off the back of the camera um but yeah what you've done there is is spot on just to kind of open up the shadows a bit and flatten it off more Exactly. And I think what the back of the camera has such a terrible screen most of the time, like it's <laughs> such a screen, that they have to show you in the preview a little bit more of the shadows and desaturate it a bit just to make it look not so crunchy, you know. Mm -hmm. And then so I'm I'm usually trying to get back to that place I was in the back of the camera because I can then have more control of where I want to go with my shadows and my saturation and mm -hmm. everything. So um, I'm going to leave the white balance as shot. Now, there's a little dirty trick I use every now and again, and this is for people who are not purists. Um, I go into my phase one, I'll use the P45, I think is what I used to own. Um, do, oh, the IQ160. I just use these like uh, these processing filters from other cameras sometimes. I don't think it'll work very well in here, but you get an interesting, it's like using random filters and just kind of, uh, thumbing through them and seeing what kind of desaturated looks you can get. I think this one is ruining things a bit, but on some of my images, like they just, when you use, especially the phase one, cause they're built in much like super closely into capture one. I mean, capture one was yeah. created for phase one, right? Um, so I use these and they kind of give it a little funky feel, but that's a really a dirty trick. But <laughs> this is where 50 R&D engineers suddenly fall on their swords for <laughs> the, the, the different yeah. workflow. <laughs> Throw people under the bus. <laughs> Can I just say also why I kind of started using Capture One? In the yeah, of course, screen? definitely. Bring me back on screen. Yeah. Um, so back in the day, I think it was 2014. Yep. Um, Critique and I did a creative live class. Right. Uh, and I think we were the first like people to do a class using Capture One at okay. the time. Um, the software has really come a long, long way since Definitely. then. Definitely, yeah. But w when I used to work as an assistant on every pro set I ever was on, everyone was using Capture One. And I kept asking why, and they said, but just like, and I hope you don't mind me saying, but you know, eight years ago, 
it used to crash a lot when it was for sure <laughs> and uh, yeah. they've really it's like now it's the best tether software there is yeah um but they were like look the raw processing engine it's just superior to anything else you get such better range out of the images and i've always told people that when they they come from lightroom or um aperture by apple at the time mm -hmm. um or whatever other app you're using and i've been like try the capture one trial and just put some of your favorite images through there and see what else you get out of the raw file and it's pretty incredible what you can get because it just has such higher fidelity i don't know how you do it so you guys engineers you can get off your swords now please yeah, thank yeah. you <laughs> yeah, they, <laughs> they've, really they've, now, they've now forgiven you for sure <laughs> yeah 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 but don't don't let me hold on to that feeling for too long because yeah. i'm sure i'll uh, yeah <laughs> but um so i'm just going to go again into my um cyan world here let me just double check to see it's like a color range yeah look so now it's highlighting a lot of this wig and i could even bring in and make little adjustments here and bring in more of it. That was not what I meant to do. And just expand the range of what uh, color range is selected. Mm -hmm. Smoothness doesn't do very much. Okay. So we've got, we can see that we're going to affect most of the image. And I'm just going to see where we can go with a little bit more of that atomic blue. I think that's the word, right? Yep and just bring the saturation up. And again, I'm thinking about where I wanted to be when I shot this image. And then the saturation, when I bring it down, it brings a kind of hard, um, almost shadow-like artifact on the side that I don't quite want. I'm not gonna be too heavy-handed with this, but that feels nice. Let me just see if we're getting any of these tones in the image. Yeah, that's all in the dress down here and in the eucalyptus. So I've already, I think if I expand into the yellow a bit more, I don't want to. I want to make sure I don't affect the skin tones. I'm not going to get much more from this side. Let me just see what happens on the yellow. Oh, I guess what is this color called, David? <laughs> hmm. Well, the, they've kind of been tuned to like tie into common things that people might um, want to edit, like skin tones or like like. Uh, so I'm just squinting on my screen, but but the 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 color uh, swatch that's closest to skin tone also avoids the lips for example. So they're kind of preset to, to try and make the job a little bit easier for you as, as well. But then if you do want to play around with the ranges too, as you're doing, then you've got that option. Right. Hmm. Perfect. So yeah, I'm going to see this one. It just affects the skin tones ever so slightly. So I'm going to just be careful with making hue adjustments and there's not much happening. But you see, I'm getting some of the green out. If you look at the eucalyptus she's holding, you do get a little bit of that green. I think that's quite nice. And I'm watching the skin. It's not affecting it too much. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's like we're also getting a lo-fi transmission here, right? So it's not like going to show the little subtleties. No. But this just gives the colors a little bit more of a pop. And I like the lightness slider much more than I do the saturation slider. Um, so that feels nice. And I know that I'm affecting it a little bit with uh, this option too. If you have questions, by the way, in the meantime, just yep. hit me. Yep, I do have a couple. So when you've when you've uh, finished on this little task, wanna, I'll throw a couple at you. Yeah, do the little color. So let's just have a look at before and after on this already. So we just made subtle adjustments, and um, and the only thing we've played with because... really is the color editor and white balance so far, isn't it? Right, and yeah. then so I've got yeah, and I've changed it from the curve from um so the before actually has a little bit more punch but we'll mm -hmm. get it back we'll get it back so i've just gone kind of to this desaturated place and um i can now you see so the before is on the left and mm -hmm. the after is on the right and the before right now looks nicer so either i'm gonna um go back to just having it on auto which gives it a little bit more punch or i can go into my uh, basic adjustments here and increase my contrast and my exposure a little bit and bring the shadows down a little bit mm -hmm. and maybe bring the exposure up a little bit. And there we have a punchy image again. And now you can see I've made those changes that I want to go to rather than relying on my um, preset curve. So I'm, I'm using the film extra shadow curve and not just relying on the camera's interpretation of how the image should be. Yeah. Um, 
and, that, and that's actually good. quite a, ni a nice start point to go for the extra shadow. And we had a question from Christian earlier, if you'd ever tried, there's a curve called linear response as well, which is like super flat. Um, and Christian was asking if you'd, if you'd ever tried that for portrait work. Yes, I have. Yeah. And every now and again, it used to work really well it depends on the camera. Like yeah. when I had, uh, when I was shooting with a phase one, the linear response worked really, really, really well. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I've used it before. Let's have a look at it actually. Why not? It's down here. It's kind of one of those use with caution aspects, but I'd say if you yeah, did have and... a, a super contrasty start point and you wanted to go really flat, then that's the way to do it. Yeah. But there's definitely more work for you to do with editing if you're going to go with that and we can yeah. we can get into like the science of why linear response makes everything look darker yeah <laughs> but it's got to do with yeah the yeah the, basically there's a lot of magic happening behind the scenes yes <laughs> to make your images mm -hmm. look good definitely um so i start with those things and i want my color not to be like over the top what's the point of going crazy you know um but I play around with the contrast. And what I like about the Capture One contrast is it doesn't, it tends not to go crazy. Mm -hmm. Like if you do this, I mean, now we, we have a dark, like her right eye gets much darker, her left eye, but um, so I'm not going to go too crazy. Um, but I know we always used to have like these commercial jobs and you're using on commercial work, you're using a lot more contrast usually. And Capture One's contrast was like known to be just like you could use the slider and it would just look great. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a little trick here, which is clarity, mm -hmm. which is kind of, I kind of think of it as like mid contrast. I think that's what it's called yep. on, on some other apps, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, and I use that sparingly also, and that you can play around with if, it has, if you want it to be punchy or neutral or classic or natural. And, you know, they all have different. It's just words to describe different settings, basically. Yeah, it's just a um, slightly it different that, look. Exactly. It gives you that little mid contrast. And what I like also, often I'm bringing the shadows back up, right? Which mm -hmm. actually looks nice here. But here to bring contrast in, I can bring the shadows down a little bit. I can add a little bit of the black. So that gives, my, gives me, oh, sorry. Yeah, adding is actually like this. So it brings the black in a little bit. Mm -hmm. It gives me a little bit of contrast. I can play with the white also to make it a little bit brighter. There we go. And I'm actually probably going to go back to my auto and reduce the contrast just a little bit. I'm not married to any one idea. I like playing around because this looks really <laughs> nice and really pops off the screen. So let's have a look again at the before and after. So we just have a little flat, uh, fairly flat image on the before, and it just gets a little bit punchy, and the colors really pop off the screen. So if you look also here in the eucalyptus, Mm -hmm. You start to see, like ever so slightly, you get a little bit of that green, and then and keep in mind also, when you've got, you've brought out those colors, you're then gonna when you make your uh, contrast adjustments, um, clarity adjustments, they're gonna respond to that as well. Definitely. So, we had a question you know, from, um, yeah. sorry, they whizzed past the screen so uh, many comments <laughs> uh, and it go goes back to something you commented earlier it's from Abdullah hey Felix what method do you use for white balancing um, based uh, you know do you do it in the shoot or just during the edit so and someone else asked uh, did you shoot a gray card or are you just going with the camera preset and then picking it up in capture one so I sh I tend to shoot um I don't use a gray card. I used to use a gray card religiously, mm -hmm. but um, I eyeball it now because if you look through my work, um, if you follow me on Instagram, you can see I use color treatments a lot and I'm not trying to, like if I was doing product photography, yeah, a gray card is really important. But for everything else, I, I, I don't. I just eyeball it and see where I want to go with something. I mean, like right now, I, I know that the correct white balance is in a different place yeah. like based on if I was to use the background as the reference, mm -hmm. um, but the cooler tone works better for this image, as yep. simple as it is. Yeah, I mean, there, I there's think, the mathematically correct gray balance or white balance, and there's the one that right. looks best on the photo. 
<laughs> right. And keep in mind that you, I just watch for the skin tones. You know, mm-hmm. skin tones need to be true. Um, and uh, we're dealing with mathematical things, whereas the eye's perception is different. And, you know, you're picking up a, like, perception of how you see something with your eyes is so different from how the camera actually takes something. So we're always in a subjective place. Like trying to insert too much objectivity into photography, I think result uh, gives you subpar results. Um, and then obviously you can do the same as what I did here with the shadows in the levels. You can bring in those blacks. I'm not too keen on, oh, it does look very nice. You see, it brings in the saturation a little bit. Mm-hmm. But I don't want to go overboard. Because what usually happens is I'll do an edit and then I'll go away from it from 10 minutes have a cup of coffee and I come back and I go, oh, okay, I was being too heavy handed. <laughs> yeah, so quite. We're in danger of that here. And especially because I'm kind of lazy, to be honest. And we have a difference between the light and the two eyes. And that's because there was a little bit of tool covering the part of the lens that's photographing this versus this. I don't really want to end up having to edit it too much. I could use layers too to uh, minimize the effect. Um, I don't want to go too far in it. And I leave the vignetting alone. The high dynamic range I use a lot. I'll show some other images later as well if we have time where I use those adjustments a little bit more. But mostly I'm living here in this color space. So Mm -hmm. to get the colors right, I'm in the color editor, which is, I think there's no equivalent anywhere else. Um, Only uh, Capture One. And then I use the color balance tool a lot. But the color balance tool for me is to get an effect. The yes. color editor is to get the colors to look right. Correct. Um, the color balance tool, so I can mess around. Usually I put a little bit of blue into the shadows. And here it works really, oh, that's lovely. <laughs> that just brings it, as we bring it over, and I, you can slide it around with this. As we bring it up to that, so what's happening is we're getting a little bit of a green, um, a little bit of green kind of everywhere in the image, especially these areas here. I'll show you how it looks before and after. Yeah, that's really nice. So that um, it brings it closer to that eucalyptus and it's really bringing out the eucalyptus vibe as well. So that's uh, in the color balance tool. I usually don't touch the midtones or highlights too much apart from just to play around and see what happens. And this isn't doing all that much. I'll bring it back. There we go. Yeah, so we just did a little bit of an edit in in the shadows. Mm-hmm. And see, actually it is, oh, there we go. Okay, it just wasn't registering. Um, and the midtones, I think, to me, are a little bit too universal. So my tip for uh, any of this work is to always be subtle. You know, I didn't drag this all the way up here to get like a green shadow. I just gave it, you know, I went, what, 15% of the way to full saturation on this adjustment. Um, and you can use that slider here also to do that, but I'm always being subtle and the subtle edits we've made have already given us such a different Yeah, feeling. definitely, definitely. The more I look at this, the more the eye is bothering me. Hmm. So I'll use the layers adjustment later, but I don't want to show like local adjustments right now. The layers tool is fantastic and I do use it, but I don't think we need to go too far in this one. Hmm. Um, I had a question from Jill, sorry, just uh, earlier. She said, just for clarification, because I find it hard to believe as well, (laughs) is this just a one light setup? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. One light setup. So um, do you think it's worth playing that video again, just now that people have kind of gotten familiar with this image? Yeah, I just, I won't roll the whole lot. I'll just roll the first uh, 10, 15 seconds and then uh, people can see exactly how it's set up. Okay, here it comes. Yeah, backlight setup. Can you see the light peeking above the thing? Perfect. So I'm going to have it just peeking above, about halfway above, and I'm going to angle it all a bit, angle it a little bit towards the V flat. Bring it up a little bit more. I'm going to. So I've just, so I've just paused it. Oop, hang on, I just muted you. I've just paused it there for a second, Felix. So. Okay. Um, we've got our audio back up. So essentially what our, I make from it, the lights peeking over the back, bounces off the V-flat, mm-hmm. lights brandy in the front, and you get your hair light at the same yep. time, which is pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. It's amazing. It's a backlight setup from the lighting series. So it might be a good intermission for me to point out that this is the my class, the lighting series. Mm-hmm. Um, we have 
most of it is just one light setup, so you'd be really, really surprised at what you can do. Go to thelightingseries.com and use promo code FELIX20 until the 26th of September. Nice. That gives you 20% off. That's the lowest price it's ever been. But, yeah, it's about, we don't use math, maths, <laughs> <laughs> no ratios. Um, I, I stripped out all the gibberish Nerdy and stuff. all the language you'll use. Yeah, because yeah. you can turn on a light and take a picture and see how bright it is. If it's too bright, turn it down. If it's too dark, turn it up. Yeah. But it gets, instead of teaching recipes, it gets you to understand how light actually works mm -hmm. without photons. We're talking about, yeah, you can point it at something and little adjustments make a difference. So if you're also in, in my uh, lighting group, Lighting with Felix Kunz, if you're in there, um, That's watch the broadcast again. I'm, yeah, we make, I show little adjustments that just kind of really change the image. And uh, that's what the lighting series is also all about. So if you're in doubt, what I want everyone to do actually after this is go to the lighting series.com and just read the reviews. That'll tell you much better than what I could say. But I'd really love when people like get really good at lighting and they realize like it's $159 right now. You will save more than $159 because you'll realize that you can do so much more with so much less. Yeah, definitely. Maybe well, one one light it. and you can do that. That's that's uh, that's pretty cool, really. And a V flat, of course. Yeah. So you need a V flat. Yeah, and a V flat. <laughs> but, but you can have a circular reflector yeah. or a wall. Yeah. I've used a, a white white uh, paper, you know, a roll of white paper. Yeah. As the background, that counts. So yeah. or a bed that sheet. works as well. Anything like that. Yeah. Or a bed sheet or a shower curtain. Yeah. Anything. Um, so let's go back to this image. So I'm really happy with where we're at. Now, the other images are going to have a similar feeling because they're in the same kind of vibe, right? So the only difference that I'm going to do, I'm going to do a little, little trick here. So you see over here on the white balance panel, mm -hmm. it says 5332. I'm going to just change that to 5333. Won't make a difference to this image. David, can you guess why I'm doing that? Uh, not yet. <laughs> because it's my little cheap trick. It's now a custom adjustment. Right. Which means when I hit Command Shift Copy or mm -hmm. Command Shift C, yep. it's going to take that adjustment so that I can then apply it to the other images. Got it. There's another way of doing it, which is if you hit Command Shift C to copy your settings, you go, um, to, where is it? This one? Yep. Use the preset store and stuff. This one, no. Where is it? That little. Oh, here we go. Adjustments clipboard. I was. I'm used to, to being up there. Okay. Yeah. So in the adjustment clipboard, you could then enable in under the colors the white balance, but it does automatically. It's just a little. The way I do it is I mm. just change the white balance by one number. So I'm going to copy it, and then I'm going to stamp it onto this image. Command Shift V, and um, that's where we end up. So for this one, there is, because I think there's tool over the entire image. Looks that We're way, just going to yeah. need, yeah. So it just takes out some of the saturation. So to make it work, we have it side by side. To make it work with this image, I think we need to bring in a little bit of the saturation again. Mm -hmm. So what I'm going to do instead of using the saturation slider, I'm just going to cheat, bring my contrast up a little bit, reduce the exposure ever so, ever so slightly, and just use my levels adjustment. There we go. Without burning out too much of the um, of the um, <laughs> that's my uh, little reminder to calibrate my screen. I appreciate <laughs> it, being... <laughs> but not now. Um, and so that brings it a little closer in line with what we had before. And um, I'll show you the before and after. You can see we're going into that lovely space on both. So if I'm putting the, both of these up on the screen, mm -hmm. I can see that I'm not going completely outrageous with the skin. Apart from this one, I have a little bit more red in the skin. So what I'm going to see is if I use my um, color editor, skin tone, I'm going to pick a saturated area of skin here. And I'm just going to see as we bring, change the hue. There we go. We were going a little bit I think that's a little, we don't need to do much, but the lightness we can change. There we go. I just bring the skin tones. That's a little closer to where, to where we are mm. in that image. I'm going to copy it, copy these settings again, apply it to this image. Now here, 
that's probably a little too saturated. I like where we were before. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to, again, take out some of the contrast, bring the levels back to somewhere reasonable, <clears throat> get rid of some of the clarity, and I just make small adjustments that bring it, there we go, because it's all perceptual. So that, I feel like that's in a similar space. But um, <clears throat> now the way I would usually do this, and then let's bring that. I'm going to copy from this image. Sorry, I don't want to do too many things without narrating what I'm doing here. I'm going to paste. <laughs> and the four of these look really nice now. And honestly, um, for this, I personally, like she has the beautiful freckles, looks great. Maybe I'll make a little adjustment to the eyes. We could do a little round trip to Photoshop. Um, but there's not much more I would do for something like this because Brandy's a photographer. I would say, hey, do you want to do any edit? She could do her own skin edit, but I don't right. think she needs any. No, no, it looks, um, looks pretty sweet just as is, really. Yeah. yeah. And then what I do, just to catch everything, I'm going to copy the settings from this image again. So I'm hitting Command-Shift-C. I'm going to select, um, clicked here on this little, I'll show you again. Okay, I clicked on the magnifying glass, mm -hmm. and then I click on the little three buttons, and... Um, I'm going to just select where my rating is less than or equal to, well, let's do less than three. So that's going to bring up all the images I didn't have in my little selection. Right. Nice. And then I'm going to stamp them all with that edit. Right. Right. So that, then I'll maybe do another pass. Oh, sorry. I didn't select them all. I'll maybe do an, so I'm, I should hit command let me just undo that because I just did that to all my images. <laughs> Whoops. Yeah, I'm sometimes a little bit too fast even for my own good, right? So <laughs> let me just check that. I just, I think I just stamped over my three stars that I edited earlier. And I want to make sure. No, those look okay. Okay. So I'll do that again. My rating is less than three. So that's going to give me every two star and below. So that's right. 165 images. I'm going to select them all and stamp those same adjustments. Obviously, for this different lighting setup, they look atrocious. Um, and then I could go through and make another edit to my images and just see if there's anything that now it has this poppy feeling mm -hmm. I've missed. You see? That actually right. feels like really nice. And you can see, oh, it didn't do it. OK, let me do that. But you get the idea, right? Yeah, if yeah. I went, I could go through everything again. because. Henry Cartier-Bresson was talking about like your contact sheet should look good. Like your contact sheet should, before you make the selects, should be in a place so that you can like see what the image actually right. looks what, like. What right, what the potential could be. Yeah, exactly. Right, right, right. That's, that's so, a good tip. Um, should we stay in Capture One? What I'll do is I'm my only edit for this is I'm going to uh, even out the exposure between the eyes a little bit more, probably bring this one, make this one a bit lighter. Mm -hmm. So David, what do you think? Should we go through a couple of the other images that I wanted to show? Yeah, definitely. One? Yeah, Should do we do that. a round trip? Okay, perfect. Up, up to you. We can, we can look at other ones as well. We can do both. Do we have any other questions? Time. Yeah, we did oh, have yeah. a question. Uh, Zach, my buddy Zach. Hi, Zach. Uh, let me just find the question. Um, but what I'll say in general is... I'm doing so much less than people think I do. Yes. Like what? so much <laughs> of my work is achieved in camera. It's so easy to do it in yeah. camera um, that, yeah, it's just like, I, I think subtlety is missing from when you're starting out, you're trying to do so much because you think there's so much, but all the work is in the prep and in the shoot. Yes. And I think focus on that, you know, capture one, the reason I use it it's because it gives me the big, the greatest image depth, and I'll show you in some of these other ones how I recover the shadows. Yeah, and th and that's a really good point. And I think whenever I, I have a guest, uh, people are always surprised that, um, you know, when I do a capture one demo, I show you know three million tools and loads of different techniques because obviously I'm trying to show all the potential that you could do, but it doesn't mean that you right. have. <laughs> to do it and then uh, whenever no, exactly. i have a guest people are surprised that oh they don't do as much as david i wonder why that is and well because you know it's it's two different purposes you're creating for an end commercial 
realization and you have done you know 70 80 percent of work in camera captions delivered you the best image quality out of the box and then the last 30 yeah. percent is the perfection process i guess yeah and i don't do anything ever to change how the lighting looks no no you know, that would be um, a bit defeatist really then wouldn't it <laughs> you can't do it you can't do it yeah. like all the dodge and burn in the world won't change the way your light looks no it's certainly um, on a, a subject like this as well what well, did we have a question yeah so um i don't know if we'll be able to answer it here it's just favoritism because I, I know zef um but maybe you can tell people what uh, this aspect of the tutorials is about uh, so he says hi felix um, in your lighting tutorials re you rely a lot uh, or, or you rely sometimes on empty plate shots that you mask in later. So how does that time with kind of what we've seen so far as well? Okay, I'll show you in the other image that I had prepared actually. Uh -huh. So what he's talking about That's handy. is here's one I prepared earlier. earlier. <laughs> think about, okay, let me run you through these images real quick. So um, you'll see here Actually, let me go to this folder that I prepared here. Let's go to Egypt. Um, so this is the finished image of this, the one I'm about to show you, right? Mm -hmm. This is the Colleen Donnell and John Donnell, the Egyptologists, and I went to Egypt with them. And they, they dress like um, the vintage fashion aficionados. This is the Nile. And on the right here, you can see the house where they stay, the dig house for their archaeological project. Nice. So I photographed them at sunrise over the Nile. A sunset, sorry. And I generally photograph, this is um, a Photex soft lighter and an ELB 500. And every member of the team, including John and Colleen, helped the light for another member of the team. So it was quite fun. <laughs> yeah. to, you know, uh, 15 different assistants. and Sure. <laughs> uh, so he's, he's lighting here an ELB, Elinchrom ELB 500 in a Photex soft lighter. And I'm just putting in a little touch of light. Mm-hmm. Um, and this is a behind the scenes shot. Obviously, this is not the shot I used. Um, and so to the question that you had, um, you can see in the raw image, you can see a little bit of the modifier. So what I do is I have the modifier in there and then I'll take another shot where I ask the assistant just to walk out of frame right. just so that I have something to composite in in this spot. Because I find that generally if I bring the modifier in close, you get nice and softer light mm -hmm. because the light is bigger and blah 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 um but yeah so i show a lot of this location work also in my uh the location series which is my second class mm -hmm. um again you can see that here the modifier is fairly close right uh, you can see here the modifiers in there and you can see it here also the modifiers in there so i'm always taking an empty frame which we call a plate right to uh, yeah to bring that in so let me show you the other behind the scenes here so this is, I photographed them dancing on the roof of the dig house that you saw in the <laughs> upper right of the previous image. Nice. And have the behind the scenes of that here. And then um, here we have uh, John in a uh, little, not a tomb, it's a little temple, I suppose. And that's how we shot it also with a little bit of daylight and then mixed in artificial light. So I'm using a little bit of strobe each time, um, even in my location work. So I pulled these up because I wanted to show you. Oh, can, the... can I just uh, throw in the question? So when you so when you shoot the back plate, um, just looking on the BTS, it doesn't look like you're on a tripod. So you know when I've done this myself with product stuff, it was always like, whatever you do, don't kick the tripod because then, you know, the, yeah. it doesn't match up. But in this case, is it close enough that it's easy enough to blend in in Photoshop. Yeah, so this mm. image is actually a really good example of where we, because something like this, right? Yeah. These organic textures, you could just clone out from what you have the rest here, right? Yeah. So I don't need to be on a backdrop. I don't need to be on a, C on a tripod because in Photoshop, getting rid of this is going to be quite easy because I have a lot of empty space to work from. Yeah. Same with this, right? Um, but for this, we had a really unique problem because these are hieroglyphs. They have to be accurate. Yeah. So right. because I didn't have the time, you can see I wasn't on a tripod. Yeah, that's what made me think. <laughs> but I do tend to remember like what my position was, and I look at the ground and see where I was. Right. 
but the retoucher Ashley Marie um, helped me on this. So she used the plates that I took, so the empty frames, just to get rid of the modifier in a way that didn't change the integrity of the hieroglyphs. Right, got I mean, it. These are thousands of years old. Um, and in this case, that's very different. Or if you have a lot of lines or buildings behind, yeah, then a tripod is essential. I've gotten okay at doing these composites like this. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's definitely something to think about. But I, I think about it very actively while I'm shooting to make sure I get it as close as I can. And then we have less retouching dilemmas. But if, okay, so if, let if me show someone you... else is retouching, then it's their problem anyway, right? <laughs> well, yeah, but, you know, you... <laughs> You, they can't. They are magicians, but I want to reduce the amount of time that takes. Exactly, in hours that they're billing you. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. It's all about efficiency. I mean, let's be honest. I I try to shoot the best I can so that I have to do less in post because I don't enjoy being in Photoshop. You know. Um. So this image. Did we have any other questions about also Brandy's image before uh, I move on? Uh. No, I think. I think we're good. Someone couldn't find. Uh, the color editor or the color balance tool because they were looking in the color editor, okay. but that's two different tools. So color balance tool and color editor, two different tools. So the one with three circles and is your color balance tool. So uh, yeah. uh, look for that. And, and as, let me just show you also how to find a tool if you don't have it. Yes. So on any of these panels, just minimize all your tools or minimize so you have this empty space and right click in the empty space and you can click add tool and look at that color balance, color editor any of the things you could ever want. So these are all the things that David will walk you through. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <Yeah. post> <laughs> exactly. Okay, so this image I shot, this is a Viking ship, an actual like modern built Viking ship back to old Viking standards because uh, they have, you know, old ships called yeah. the Draken. And I photographed them on the water in, um, in the New York Harbor. I wanted to show this one because the before and after is quite drastic, mm. actually. So I want you to have a, Look here on the right at these shadows. They were really dark. Um, there's almost no detail here in these ropes. And um, so there's a lot of adjustments I made that are subtle that just bring the colors back and lift up our shadows and get everything in the right place. So I don't know off the top of my head what I did, but I'll upgrade this to Capture 120. There we go. Um, I went to Film Standard which is a little less contrasty than the high contrast, obviously. Yep. But uh, gives me a little bit more saturation than um, than the film extra shadow, and that's because there's a lot of um, like colors in this image that come out. Just I just literally did this and thumbed through them all and saw which one felt right. So I went with film standard. Mm -hmm. I did a custom white balance adjustment. If I reset that, you can see. Um, it was really, uh, the camera really interpreted this shot. Oh, wow. Very cool. Yeah. It needs to be a bit warmer. Yeah. And, and you also get like a little bit of banding around these parts. There's not much changes here with the exposure, etc. I brought down the highlights a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, they don't do much. I didn't actually add any clarity. Let me see what other adjustments I made. This is a while ago, so I'm just kind of uh, looking through this with you as we go. Color editor. Yeah, I made some adjustments to the sky. The biggest thing is, yeah, so you can see this is actually really powerful. So I brought in a lot of the sky. And now because, you see, I brought back a lot of the sky. So I brought the lightness all the way down. Mm -hmm. Obviously, we all know that the sea is blue because the sky is reflecting off it. And because light refracts, uh, you know, the blue t um, blue part of the light and blah, blah, blah. Um, so we're getting a lot of that blue tone. And I know that the sky and the water are going to react the same. So you can see that here as I brought that down. And that is sometimes I find it really useful to slide this all the way over to get this looking really small. And the reason is because the overall balance of the image is determined by like an overall feel, yeah. not by uh, pixel peaking, you know? So I'm not trying to be in too close. And you'll notice here, I named the file with the um, edits that I sent to the retoucher. I think it was Pratik Naik that retouched this. Right. Make yellow item disappear, remove object, white object behind him, remove his hairband from his arm, and all of that was done in the retouch. <laughs> that's a hell of a uh, title. <laughs> yeah. It's, 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 and that's how I went to the client. No, I'm kidding. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but between the white balance 
and this edit were already in such a different place. And the, what I love about it is that um, Capture One really has a lot of power in all of this. And none of it, the image doesn't die from doing any of these things. You know, that's uh, like, I think I've seen in other apps, you do an edit and suddenly the whole thing just looks ridiculous. It just breaks up. Yeah, exactly. Up. Yeah, um, breaks. Tice was, and, was asking yeah. earlier as it ties in with this, uh, how long do you normally take to edit a portrait? Any tips to improve editing time? Be very impatient like I am. And then mm. at some point, so what I always say about that is um, we could have a longer philosophical discussion about how to develop a style. Right. But so much of your career that is just, okay, I need to get this out and done. So at some point there is no perfection. So much of this is just subjective mm -hmm. that I try not to linger too long. If I'm not sure about something, I just go away. Maybe I'll leave it till the next day if it's no rush. Or I just go away for five minutes. I go outside, I refresh my eyes and come back and just kind of have a look at it again. And then generally, if I really get stuck and I'm like, I don't know where this image goes, usually if I reduce everything, if I start from scratch, so I just hit Command R, reset it to the raw file, yep. I'll start again and I go a little less heavy handed. That's usually the answer. Like I've never found the solving a problem by sliding this more deeper, you know, like that's not. Yeah, more edits. <laughs> more edits, exactly. Add another layer. So again, yeah. I gave, yeah. And I gave a little bit of a, um, a blue tint to the shadow. Mm -hmm. You can see it doesn't do much, but what it does give, uh, do is we're creating contrast between his hair, which is obviously yellow, yeah. um, and skin and the boat, and bringing a little bit of contrast with that into the shadow. So that makes the image feel a little bit more like you're going to focus on the parts that I want you to yeah. be focusing on. Separates him from the background. Yeah. Exactly. Let me see if I have the finished image here. Yeah. And then in Photoshop, I did some other color adjustments just uh, based on how I felt at the time and also to make it work with the rest of the shoot mm -hmm. and added some noise. And the noise we added because uh, a bunch of the rest of the shoot had a lot of retouching because I didn't like the background on a lot of them. This is the native background. Right. And when you're doing a lot of retouching, noise hides many sins. <laughs> Quite. <laughs> <Yeah. admit> that. <laughs> but here's the behind the scenes um, shot for that image. So you can see we were heading past downtown Manhattan over and you can see the Brooklyn Bridge in the background. Yeah. But I just lit him in the same direction as the sun. Right. And I show how I do this in the location lighting series because it's all about balancing the daylight and the um, and the artificial light. Yeah. So, um, yeah, and there's, again, the Ellen Chrome LB500 in a Fotex soft lighter with my assistant, uh, Brian Holding. He's not my full-time assistant, but he helped me that on that shoot. And um, so, yeah, that's the before and after for this. Let me show you quickly the before and after for this one. Again, I did a lot of work to bring out the shadow so you can see that here on the shadow slider and i brought the mm -hmm. highlights way down because when you bring up the exposure which i did by 0.7 of a stop mm -hmm. and i wonder if i did a curve on this as well no when you bring up the exposure you're going to get those highlights um blowing out and i wanted to save them so i brought them down to minus 67 mm -hmm. just to get that sky to have a little bit more saturation um similar idea i'm recovering a fair amount of the shadows and each of these are fairly subtle so the thing is with i could just if i had this raw image i could have just brought the exposure app exactly to where i need it to be so it looks perfect but i didn't do that because i'm going to use the other tools instead to subtly bring everything slowly up to where i want it to go yeah so we're not just you know if you have five horses calling pulling a cart you want them all to do a little bit more work if you've got to go slower. You don't just get one horse to do everything. Got it. Right? Because, uh, so, yeah, in this image, fairly most of the work is bringing the exposure up and making sure I don't lose my skin tones. So I have a, a custom white balance as well. It just warms it up a tiny bit to give it that sunset feeling. And that's pretty much it. I Again, I use Film Extra Shadow as my curve, but it's just because this is a little too contrasty for me. And then we'll add all the color adjustments to get the finished image, which is this one in, in Photoshop. And then we have this one. I'll show Beautiful. the before and after. I don't think this. This, again, we warmed it up to get the sky and everything to work together a little bit and to give it a little bit more of a romantic 
feeling like from another time so that yeah. it warms it up a little bit and everything comes together so in color theory in general if you bring all the tones into a similar world you're going to have an easier time making your colors balance just because they're uh, not jumping around from each other too much so this kind of color monochrome feeling is really easy to achieve with just the custom white balance and then again look i didn't do much i added a little bit of contrast 15 contrast brought up the shadows a little bit and i probably did a bunch of color work yeah in this case i brought the shadows to a warm place mm -hmm. um midtones i played around with a little bit with like the cyan world greenish cyan and i just had um had to do with the sky and also this the clay kind of had a little bit of that greenish tint that i wanted to show and it worked well and i'm, I'm just messing around with these things usually when i'm doing it and seeing where i end up <laughs> well there's there's no science to the color balance tool it's just uh it's all by eye and you know anyone shouldn't be afraid to to use it really it's just exactly. play, play around and, and see what looks good and your eye gets used to it after a while. You get used to it and you can see color better. Like that's just a matter of time. Mm -hmm. um, again, here we did a custom white balance. Oh, that's what it looks like before. Um, hang on. If I do the shot, it's just subtle. It just warms it up a little bit. Again, film extra shadow because I am recovering shadows from this image. Mm -hmm. um, exposure is up almost to stop. I'm lifting the shadows with this shadow slider. And then we've got um, very little work in the color balance because go back to the original image. It's already all in one place. It's already all very warm. Yeah. Again, I used the plate to get rid of the modifier. So again, I'm not doing very much, but you do get to see that I brought out the shadows. I mean, this is a fairly underexposed image. Um, there's technical reasons for that because I was bringing in some of the ambient light and, you know, where you end up with your shutter speed and mm -hmm. uh, your ISO and all of that affects the image. And But I knew that I could bring out the shadows really satisfactorily. Like, look at what's this area here behind him. You have no detail almost at all in the original shot. And Capture yep. One brings out so much of that hieroglyph back there. Some dude doing a thing. <laughs> some um, dude doing a thing, yeah. I'm doing a thing, yeah. And what, what um, camera are you shooting on? You're with Nikon, aren't you? This was the Nikon Z7. Nice. Yeah, yeah no, it, it's, it's... Sorry, really Sorry no, David. Z, Nikon Z7. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it just goes to show what you can pull out of a sensor, really. And it not look weird, yeah. because there is the danger of shadow recovery. It can start to look posterized and not very pleasant and everything, but that, that looks fantastic. Yeah, if it's dead, if the pixels are dead, you can't get them back and then let's just go through this last image and I wanted to show you um, look particularly at the hat and the color tone I wanted to bring this all into this little bit more desaturated place yep. but then make the colors work together and I wanted mm -hmm. them to be a bit more jewel tones is that the right word yep whatever you can feel like you can feel that the hat and the shirt and the tank top feel much more uh, cohesive yes in that, this that was the this, word i right? was looking so, for <laughs> yeah cohesive yeah yep. exactly they're, cl Words they're closer hard. together so, now. yeah exactly and here is actually a um an example of where i used this icc profile i cheated so if uh -huh. i come back to the nikon generic one it does work nicely but then when i go to the uh i use the phase one presets right. for the ICC profile. It just gives me a little bit of a, sat, uh, a desaturated look that just kind of shifts it. It's a bit of cheating. It's like putting on a filter. <laughs> and for this one, um, on the high dynamic range, I also brought up a lot of the shadows, um, played around with the highlights and the white point and the black point. Added, I actually took out some of the clarity, but I wanted to show you for the hat and the color editor. I think it's this one. In all three of these, mm -hmm. I don't think it'll come through on the screen to you in the low res. But oh, no, no, it does. I bring all three of these back in. You just, I just played subtly around with the advanced, uh, at the different areas of the advanced tool mm -hmm. to change. I think this one changes the the shirt, yeah, and then this one is for the hat, and it just ever so subtly changes the. Um, yeah, there we go. That's just isolating the hat and the skin. 
changes the tone of um, those colors just to bring them a little bit closer together. And then I did a skin tone adjustment, which I then, because we have on him, I think the skin ended up being a bit too saturated mm -hmm. in the final image. I think I have it here. Do I have it? Yes. In the final image, it came back a little bit unsaturated from right. what I did in Photoshop. But this is like, um, this is another one of the setups from the lighting series. It's something called layered light, which I, where I use kind of um, lighting to make, make it feel really layered. And this is a two light setup and it's much more simple than you would imagine. Yeah. And that's the lighting series. Um, and I do a similar thing in the location series. We shot this outside um, to kind of create a little bit of interest. But the thing is, like this image, in Capture One, you can see how the skin tone and the background and everything kind of becomes cohesive. Yeah, yeah. And just subtle adjustments in Capture. Fantastic. So, just goes yeah. to show you don't have to, as I said, use 500 tools to get a fantastic result. <laughs> no, exactly. Yeah. And I'm using a fair amount, actually, but doing subtle adjustments. Yeah, and, it's not big, uh, bold, big, uh, massive yeah, changes. Yeah. yeah. Well, unfortunately, that kind of brings us to uh, the end of our session, pretty much. I'm just going to look through the last um, few questions. Uh, Christian says, if it works and does the job, it's not cheating. It's just optimized workflow. There we go. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, um, I mean, no, there's, there's no one dictates how we should do it, right? No, no, absolutely. Not even uh, David, brother. Not even me. No, exactly. I say I'm there just to show you all the potential, but it doesn't mean uh, you have to use it. Um, I'm just going to put up your uh, Facebook group on screen. So, guys, take a note of that. Uh, lighting with... Uh, Felix Kunz, and then the next picture I'm going to put anyone. up yeah. <laughs> is thelightingseries.com, locationseries.com, easy to remember, uh, and Felix20 for that discount code um, as well. So uh, do check out those different websites, and of course go to the Facebook group as well, because that's uh, a super nice community, and as we said at the start of uh, when you and I were chatting before live, it said uh, it's a great community. If you follow the rules, you don't get kicked out, which is <laughs> a good mantra to live by on all Facebook groups, I think. I'm, I'm, uh, what, what's been really good in that group is we have a very positive community, but that's because I take out anyone that's not. That's good. That's the way to do it. Rule with an iron fist, yeah. <laughs> well, it's, I'm not that, it's not harsh, but it's very <laughs> people who are being subjective and... You know, uh, words that I could swear right yeah. now, but I won't. For or sure. people who are just being constructive. Yeah, definitely. And um, well, that's the, that's the way to do it, really, because then it just makes for a better group, and everyone's on the same page, and it just it just works exactly. so much better. So so glad to hear it. I'm in there as well. Um, I'm a lurker. I don't contribute because I don't know much about lighting, but uh, it's just nice to see the wealth of talent there and and everyone picking up the tips from. Uh, the lighting series so yeah everybody go check that out as well all right well I think um, that pretty much wraps up uh, I was just looking for any last nuggets of um, questions but sorry if we couldn't answer all your questions we could have spent an hour just answering questions essentially but you know where Felix is now and you can see his Instagram account so you can punk him on there as well right Felix <laughs> good all right well thanks for joining uh everybody um as i said this went straight to youtube so you can go and pick it up wherever you like uh it'll be there within a matter of minutes from uh, when we close it so thanks again felix for joining us thanks everyone for watching yep and it's a pleasure take care everyone and enjoy the rest of your thursday bye now bye felix bye david <laughs>